So welcome. I'm glad uh, that uh, and appreciate everyone that has turned out for this benefit. It's uh, we are the Caldera uh, songwriting tribe of Eugene. And the benefit today, the benefit concert will uh, go to help uh, Egan Warming Center. After 5,000 gigs, a million miles, and 12 albums, John Scheip is starting, finally, to get the hang of it. His motto is, context is everything, orthodox is the enemy. But he isn't all that orth unorthodox, he's just good. He writes good songs about complicated people, sung politely, and his old band opened for Bob Dylan. See, I didn't know that, that's impressive. Valentine's Day It's Valentine's Day you Gotta think of something romantic to say you Gotta pick up some flowers and write it all down in a card It shouldn't be very hard But how can I make these feelings Bigger than they already are I promise you the moon and the stars Valentine's Day Gotta dress up nice, look a certain way Gotta make a reservation to someplace fancy and posh Oh my gosh But how can I make these feelings Finer than they already are I hope they let us sit at the bar If I call too late It happens It's Valentine's Day, gotta write a pretty love song to sing and play. Gotta get a box of chocolate that'll probably cost an arm and a leg. The kids are gonna eat anyway. But how can I make these feelings sweeter than they already are? Two fireflies in a jar. That's some poetry right there. Poetry. This is pretty much all I do. I just put around the house, writing songs about you. Walking the dog, and doing the dishes, and folding laundry, and making wishes for Valentine's Day. It's Valentine's Day, I've got errands to run, and bills to pay, but somewhere in the middle of all of that pushing and shoving, we're gonna squeeze in some loving. Thank you. I'd like to introduce now Kathy Martini. And Kathy is an English-born folk singer who spent several years traveling the world she settled in Oregon where she raised a family and began writing songs that reflect her love of the natural world. Her songs are a blend of traditional and Americana that speak from the heart and have delighted audiences on both sides of the pond. This is actually not about my love of nature. This is about my history with relationships. So let's go back a few years. I met him on an island when I was 21. He was tall and tanned, and he had blue eyes that sparkled in the Grecian sun. How could I resist when he looked at me and he said, hey, beautiful, because I was 21 when I met that one little son that I We wild away the afternoon at a table in the square. And he said he knew a place to stay that wasn't far from there. As the sun went down over cobbled streets, well, I knew what I would do. I would stay there on that island for those eyes sparkling. 
There was no warning, there was no insight from above. That's just what happens when you're 21. Taverners on the hillsides, tables in the shade, and the widows with their long black shawls, the old men counting beads. Swimming in the ocean, we were laughing, holding hands. When you're 21 and you fall in love in the sun drenched foreign land. No warning, no insights from above. That's just what happens when you're 21. But summer comes to an end And the swallows head south And he left for his home down under Where he'd put his life on hold And me, I'd gambled everything I left everything I knew When I stayed there on that island For those eyes of sparkling well, who's to say what's wrong or right? We're just trains passing in the night. A bird of prey or a turtle dove, you're 21 in love. And though we never met again, well, I know that love was true. When I stayed there on that island, for those eyes of sparkling blue. Thank you, Kathy. We definitely have a Valentine's Day theme going, uh, which reminds me I have to pick up a gift. Um, I'm going to be shamelessly, um, uh, I guess, have the, in a shameless act of nepotism, I'm going to read my five-year-old granddaughter's first haiku. I like to sing songs when I walk by the river. It makes me happy. My wife told me to stop impersonating a flamingo. I had to put my foot down. It's not bad. All right. So Barbara is a singer, songwriter, guitarist who performs solo and as a band member for over 35 years throughout the Northwest. In the Newport area, she played for 10 years with Rick Bartow and the Backseat Drivers and with the Dalby Gang. She performs now as Barbara Lee and Frankie T with Frankie Trujillo Dalby on bass. Southbound Door, her recent CD, is an amazing collection of original songs written over the past 50 years from New York to Oregon. Her music is genuine, award-winning, lovingly crafted, and unforgettable. This is a true story. Noah's wife wakes up every day at dawn, takes a little walk before she puts the kettle on. She goes out to the barn in the brambles and the bees, calls out to the heavens, Lord, won't you help us please? There's a store. Yeah. 
this card of faith, there's righteousness within. No matter who you love, no matter how you pray, when that flood has come, this card will carry you away. There's a storm that's about to break. There is a storm. Her children all in red Cast a backward glance at him Snoring on the bed And as she shut the door Her youngest daughter said What about the animals That never learn to swim There's a storm That's about to break There is a storm Thank you, Barbara. That was great. Um, that's some serious picking. I think, hope we have a bucket of salt water for you to soak your fingers in after doing that one. Uh, here is a haiku that was submitted by one of our uh, Caldera singer-songwriters for Valentine's Day, I think. Couple falls in love. Another breaks up in tears. Folk songs in this church. I want to die peacefully in my sleep like my grandfather, not screaming and yelling like the passengers in his car.
One person isn't here this year for this year's benefit that I think we all meet and who's miss and is very special to us, and that's Beth Wood, who is a good friend, a great singer, and one of the people who started, helped start this uh, benefit. And one of the haikus that uh, one of the, our singers, songwriters submitted says this, in this, my haiku, a shout out to a hero, big hearted Beth Wood. And then I got a haiku uh, this morning from Beth Wood. And it says, it brings so much joy, the Caldera songwriters singing from their hearts. He's the Egan Warming Center Operations Coordinator. He became involved with the Egan Warming Center as a volunteer in 2013 when the uh, temperatures went below zero degrees for several nights in a row. He's grateful for all the support that Egan gets from a community. I worked for St. Vincent de Paul and with Egan for three years after I retired as a journalist. Best three professional years of my life. And I love St. Vincent de Paul and I love what Egan does. So. Thanks, Paul. Uh, thank you all for coming out. I'm not going to sing to you, uh, fortunately. I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, something, just one little bit of Egan that uh, I think you guys are helping with and that you guys can continue to help with and that others can help with as well. Um, I'm going to leave my mask on if that's okay. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, like Paul said, we open when the temperatures are really cold. And we actually had a cold streak back in December um, where it was really snowy. And we had a lot of our guests come in with soaking wet feet, soaking wet uh, pants, soaking wet jackets or no jackets. Uh, we had guests come in with one shoe on, um, guests with socks that were falling apart, guests with um, horrible uh, uh, injuries on their feet. And um, we do our best, we try our best to be able to accommodate people when they come in in that situation. But sometimes we can't. Sometimes we come in, some people, somebody comes in and they need a certain size of shoe and we don't have it. And sometimes we can make a phone call, but at one in the morning, not everybody answers their phone. And um, so one of the things that we always encourage people to do is to bring donations, uh, bring appropriate winter gear. And that's not just clothing, also things like sleeping bags and tents, um, but rain pants, shoes of all sizes in good condition, socks, uh, winter jackets, rain coats, uh, and also just changes of pants are huge. Um, so you can do that by bringing anything to an Egan Warming Center when it's open. Uh, best time to do that is right at the be beginning of the evening. Um, you can also bring things to a St. Vincent de Paul donation center. Um, there's one up on Chad Drive, uh, and there's one over on Seneca, um, out by uh, Fred Myers over there. And um, just mark the bag for Egan Warming Center. Um, and we don't open all that much anymore, unfortunately. Well. I guess, uh, no, unfortunately, because um, the weather seems to be changing. It seems to be getting warmer. Um, and so if you have things to give to people um, outside of Egan times, uh, please help people out. Um, just imagine what it's like to be out there in the rain and not have an appropriate pair of shoes um, and not be able to go inside and get warm or anything like that. So um, if any old shoes you have, I, I think I have extra pairs of shoes that I should be giving away myself. Um, we all have an extra couple of pairs of shoes that we can give to somebody. Um, you don't have to give it to Egan, you can give it to anybody. Um, but Egan is a great place to do that. And when people come in next time, I want to be able to say, oh yeah, we have size 13 right here. Um, here you go. Um, and if they're waterproof shoes, even better. So uh, thank you all for your support, and thanks for doing this every year. I mean, you guys have done this how many years now? Ten. Ten? Um, yeah, thanks. One of the magical things about um, Egan Warming Center, which when it was started uh, became a national model uh, for other communities, is that it has just this incredible base of community support. There are literally, literally more than 1,000 people in Eugene and Springfield who've been trained. Uh, to work at Egan, who have worked with Egan. And the beauty of it is, is they've come to know our homeless community, people in it, not as tents, not as irritations or aggravations, but as people. 
and that's that's uh, in a, a in wonderful thing for this community. It gives us built-in grassroots grassroots support for programs that help the uh, hope the homeless. is an obscure author of funny books on dull subjects. You're trying to build up sales, aren't you? Yeah. Like There Are No election, Electrons, Electronics for Earthlings, Calculus for Cats, and Revenge of the Pond Scum. He is an even more obscure songwriter. Uh, I may vie with you for the obscurity. Who moved to Eugene from Colorado just in time for the pandemic. This is a, this is a good cause. Uh, when I moved here four years ago or so, uh, I was invited to play some soothing background music for the Egan Warming Centers from time to time. For quite a while, I knew more homeless people in Eugene than, uh, than home to people. But back in Denver, I sang in a choir called the Last Night Singers. Um, and we sang for veterans' homes and uh, veterans' veterans' hospitals and nursing homes and things like that. The guy who stood beside me died. 
but I'm pretty sure it's a coincidence. I don't think my music had anything to do with it. Um, anyway, that inspired me to write this song. Tuesday nights in the choir room, the autumn of each year, we learned our parts and filled our hearts with music of good cheer. For friends who feel forgotten, some who lost their homes, for soldiers far with family near, feeling alone. But I never saw a church on Sunday morn, I guess that's fair. But Tuesday nights in the choir room, I did my worship there. And some of the notes we sang were right, some had good intent. But the final chord rang loud and true when the music was all spent. And then the tenors joked, the sopranos all spoke, the albums did beguile. Me and Jim in the bass back row, we just watching Sally smile. Watching Sally smile, us singing sweet and mild. Me and Jim in the bass back row, we just watching Sally smile. Dunlin was a rambling lad, one day he had to go to the grand backstage where the music's made for the great celestial show. All the angels laid their harps down, picked up mandolins, but celebrate by the pearly gates. A bass finally got him. I know I'll see him smiling. By stage three, walking around Swallow Hill, spread in harmony. And watching Sally smile, us singing sweet and mild. Me and Jim in the bass back row, we just watching Sally smile. Some folks are known by what they own, some by what they do. Some complete the friends they keep. Oh, and Jim kept quite a few. But ones to hold when the day grows old, you know, by what they love. Good songs are pearls for pretty girls. We'll never have enough. So take a sip and toast Jim's trip and beauty where we find it. Don't shed a tear, your friend's not here. Where we follow close behind you. And some of the notes we sang were right, some had good intent, but the final chord rang loud and true. And then the tenors joked, the sopranos all spoke, the altos did beguile. Me and Jim in the bass back row, we're just watching Sally smile. Watching Sally smile, I sing sweet and mild. Me and Jim in the bass back row, we're just watching Sally smile. Ashamed and appalled to say that there were a few banjo jokes that were sent in uh, for this event. 
So uh, what is the difference between a banjo and a South American macaw? Does anybody know? One is loud, obnoxious, and noisy, and the other is a bird. <laughs> What's the difference between a skunk run over on the road and a banjo player run over there on the road? You can see the skid marks in front of the skunk. Oh, that's cruel. That's cruel. I'm sorry. I apologize. No one should have written that joke. Carl has played music for guests at Egan Warming Centers. In fact, he co coordinates the Egan Music Program. And he's done this since, uh, he's played since they first opened over 10 years ago. And Carl says Egan is still his favorite gig. Not his only gig, his favorite gig. So, and Carl also is a heck of a friend. And if you ever want to jam, call Carl Fallsgraf. He's a joy to play music with. Carl? I was uh, going to come out here and play my banjo, but at the last minute I changed my mind when I realized what was going on here. Um, this is a song um, that I wrote a number of years about uh, an Egan guest, um, actually. Um, she was a, a woman, her real name was Lily, I call her Angel in this song, took a little poetic license. And uh, at, uh, at one point I'd always meant to talk to her and kind of get her story, and she disappeared before I was able to do that. Since I never got her real story, I made one up, and that's what this song is. It's called Angel on the Sidewalk. Angel on the sidewalk, you know her well. Might be your sister, but you can't tell Because it's hard to see the face One who's doomed to fall through a floor you thought was solid But it ain't at all And the angel on the sidewalk keeps her future and her past In a shopping cart and backpack she dug from the trash She talks to Jesus and Jehovah Voices from on high Giving small comfort When the snow begins to fly I, 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 I. From that patch of sidewalk She asked me for a buck Help an angel down on her luck While well, I reached into my pocket to do what I could Then said, tell me your story, angel, if you would Angel laid it out, man, the good and the bad From her happy schoolgirl days to her mean and drunken dad Then mama died, it was him and her and nothing could be done but to hunker down till she got old enough to run. Angel, spread your wings, you're gonna rise, rise, rise. Trade this dirty sidewalk for your true home in the sky. I, I, I. I, I. At 15, she was on her own, hustling to get by. She was begging for her food. She was selling to get high. That's when the voices started whispering at first. Now they're kind of like a family, they're kind of like a curse. When you're on your own, you take what comes your way. A dollar from a stranger, or a voice that comes to say, Angel, spread your wings, you're gonna rise, rise, rise. Trade this dirty sidewalk for your true home in the sky. I, I, I. 
That was Angel's story, I can't tell you if it's true, but I'll bet you're mighty glad it's her and not you. But is she all that different from those of us who try to make it through this world on a hustle and a lie? I, 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 Angel disappeared, no telling where she'd go, off to Vegas or to heaven. Ain't hey, nobody knows, perhaps she was a vision sent to open up my eyes to the beauty of an angel who can rise, rise, rise. I, I, I. I have the pleasure of introducing our uh, wonderful master of ceremonies, Paul Neville. Let's give him a round of applause here. And uh, this is not an easy job because he had to wrangle bios from uh, 12 wayward musicians. This is not an easy thing. So the, uh, the other night I asked him, I said, this is great. You know, Paul, did you get, uh, you know, you get uh, bios from everybody? He said, oh, yeah, I got I had to bug him and all this stuff. And I said, really, you got bios from everybody? He said, yeah. Um, but that's a lie, because one person didn't send in a bio. Oh. Paul Neville did not send a bio. So according to Article 7, Section 3 of the Caldera Songwriters Bylaws, I get to say anything I want about him. Born in a boxcar in central Indiana, to impoverished but loving hobo parents, Paul ran away to the circus when he was nine years old, made his way through the world. Unfortunately, while he was in the circus, he was giving the elephant steroids. The FBI came and found out about it and questioned him. Paul was afraid he was going to spend the rest of his life in the slammer, he had to go into witness protection. That's when he came by the name Paul Neville. We don't really know that. At any rate, Paul uh, uh, managed to uh, overcome his difficult uh, childhood, uh, make his way out here to uh, Oregon, and uh, uh, become a journalist with the Register Guard. This, by the way, is the first true thing I've said so far. He actually did work for the Register Guard. And like any self-respecting journalist, uh, left that paper as it transitioned from respected local newspaper to a corporate rag, uh, just in time to go work at uh, St. Vincent de Paul's, which is uh, when he became involved in the Egan Warming Centers. Um, you will also find out in just a second, he's a tremendously uh, talented songwriter and a very heartfelt uh, song. Uh, while he finishes up tuning, um, let me... Uh, Give you a, a few more uh, haikus here. I am 70. Can't sing what I forget, but can't forget to hum. Talk of gratitude. Talk of counting your blessings. Face it, life is hard. <laughs> and on that note, we have a song from Paul about uh, a, another kind of a hard life. Take it away, Paul. By the way, do you know what you call a banjo player in a three-piece suit? No, Paul, I don't. Will the defendant please rise? <laughs> All right, here's a song, uh, sadly a true story from my youth, uh, and it's called Trailer Park Girl. <laughs> I was 12 years old, living in a ranch house in St. Louis, right off Route 66. One day I found a path that led into the woods, and it went to a trailer park deep in the sticks. Now the trailers were shoddy, just falling into pieces. The yards were a mess of trash and fill 
In the middle of it all was a big willow tree. And that's where I met that trailer park girl. She was a trailer park girl from St. Louis Mo. Tall and skinny with a double wide grin. She made me laugh. She was my friend. She was a trailer park girl from St. Louis Mo. Now Iris had blonde hair and bright blue eyes. She was playing in the dirt. She was making the mud pies. She wore old coveralls that hid two real bony knees and her laughter was filled with sky hills and trees. Now Alan, Lyra said her mama, they lived in an old trailer. There was a big hole right through their kitchen floor. Iris told me that whenever she lost her key, that hole worked as good as any old door. She was a trailer park girl from St. Louis Mo, tall and skinny with a double white grin. She made me laugh, oh, she was my friend. She was a trailer park girl from St. Louis Mo. There was a beat up old chef in their front yard. We played inside it. We took make-believe trips. One day we drove all the way to Nome, Alaska, cause that's where she said her daddy lived. But mostly I listened to Iris tell me stories about wizards and brave kings, braver queens about cowboys and cowgirls who saved the day. We were two little kids dreaming sweet kid dreams. She's a trailer park girl from St. Louis Mo, tall and skinny with a double wide grin. She made me laugh, she was my friend. She was a trailer park girl from St. Louis One day it came to a sorry sad end when my mother followed me down that path. She saw Iris and me playing in that old car. Dragged me home and said, son, you're never going back. But I went back the first chance I had. Ran down that path to find my friend. But the trailer was empty. Iris and her mama were gone. No one could tell me where she went. Now and then the memory of an old friend floats past you like an ash in the wind. You follow behind hope to find her again. She was a trailer park girl from St. Louis Mo, tall and skinny with a double white green. She made me laugh, oh she was my friend. She was a trailer park girl from St. Louis Mo. So if you find an old lady who tells tall tales, makes pies, has skinny knees, and a double wide grin. Please tell her I hope she's oh so well. Tell her that she'll always, always be my trailer park friend. Dave Taylor, 
who uh, first attended Caldera Song Camp in 2013 and has been back at least three more times. His songs cover the range from humorous to excessively depressing. So you're in for a treat. Uh, prior to COVID, he was a frequent participant in open mics around Corvallis and Salem, something he's getting, looking forward to getting back to. And Dave and I share a love of whitewater boating. So uh, I've heard he writes some good whitewater songs as well. Choice in the dark, dreary part of winter to sit in on one of Beth Wood's songwriting classes, which I really recommend, uh, especially when you're stuck at home and there's nothing else to do. You hang out with Beth and write songs for a while. That's pretty good. So anyway, this came out of that. Well, I've got neighbors that don't agree about much of anything politically, and it's not much fun. Stuck in the middle of people who've given up being civil. I try to listen, lend an ear, looking for hope in the hate and fear. Ask them both just to give it a try Let those bygones go by But this is what they said And the one on the left said He's just a hardcore redneck Has a lifted pickup Naked lady mud flaps Fully stocked gun rack Yard signs that leave me steaming Dirt bike engines always screaming Poison spray in all his ditches It's hard to take those sons of bitches I caught his boy making eyes at my daughter That'll never happen come hell or high water And I don't see any point in talking to them But I told him, I know he's not woke In fact, he's pretty dang sleepy But maybe there's somewhere in the middle You could meet me And after we've shared beer or three we could say in all sincerity that all of this fussing, the cussing and screaming only leaves a bad, sad feeling. Let's sit down, give it a try. What do we got to lose? And the one on the right said, He's just an old growth hippie, long hair and all. Animal rights stickers on that Prius car. They only Big and organic shit I tried to buy once I was almost sick Those tall green plants don't smell so nice Well I know what they are, sweet Jesus Christ I caught his daughter making eyes at my son I can promise you now that's one and done I don't see any point in talking to them But I told him, well, I know you're not woke in fact, you're pretty dang sleepy, but maybe there's somewhere in the middle you could meet me. And after we've shared a beer or three, we could say in all sincerity that all of this fussing, the cussing and screaming, it only leaves a bad, sad feeling. Let's sit down, give it a try. What do we got to lose? You could bring a bag of quick set concrete He could bring a little wood and some steel We could build ourselves a big bridge between us Crossing that river of fear well, I've got neighbors that don't agree about much of anything politically but it's been fun watching from the middle as both of them turned pretty much civil the kids had the twins late last year and that put away the hate and fear I asked them both how they decided to let those bygones go by and this is what they said one of us is woke one still sleeping, but inch by inch, there's a friendship creeping. God knows we've shared a beer or four. There's no doubt we'll be sharing some more. And all of that fussing, the cussing and screaming, it faded away. It's out of season. We sat down, gave it a try. What did we have to do? 
Oh, you can sit down, give it a try. What have you got to lose? Haiku. Lockdown or open, music is the remedy for healing all hearts. And a joke. When life gives you melons, you might be dyslexic. Eli is a member of Tobias the Owl, a critically acclaimed, award-winning musical collective based in the Pacific Northwest. Tobias Owl has collaborated with Ben Harper, this is a big name for you, William Shatner, Laura Viers, and many other Grammy-winning artists. The music of Tobias the Owl has been featured on Starbucks stores worldwide and has appeared on the soundtracks of films and television shows internationally. Some of Tobias the Owl's songs have been covered by Jonah Tolkien, Deer Tick, and many others. I will also say that um, he is the facilitator for the Alluvium and generously and very kindly and accommodatingly opened the doors for this event. So thank you. So first of all, we, what we want to do here at Alluvium is try and facilitate people having spiritually nourishing experiences. And what we don't want to do is define what that means. So our philosophy is sort of based on the idea that there's a lot of indictments of organized religion. So we aspire to be disorganized religion. And I think um, at least the disorganized part of that we accomplish in spades. Um, but we do do a lot of very good things for the public through this space that I'm really proud of. And I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge that our community has really done some tremendously wonderful and altruistic things. Um, just as a few examples, we've given out over 1,000 tents since the month of December. We give out roughly 1,000 major things per month, actually. During the heat wave, we gave out over 5,000 beverages. We've lately been working a lot with Operation Period out of the University of Oregon. They're a really fantastic organization. And what they do is they provide feminine hygiene products for the unhoused. Um, really great folks to work with. We also work with Ben Spoke Outreach, which provides resources for the unhoused. We work with The Way Home, which provides a pathway to get people into homes, into shelters, and into safe sleeping sites. We also work with Eugene Burrito Brigade and um, Andy and Timothy, who put on a really great free market every Sunday at Alluvium at 1 o'clock. So if you're interested in finding out more about Alluvium, um, you can come to our free market, which is outside in our parking lot, every Sunday at 1 o'clock. We also have an open mic here at Alluvium every Sunday at 7 o'clock. And I'd be remiss if I didn't say that I feel like whether or not you, uh, you sort of spiritually align with any religion, what you all are doing here to benefit Egan Warming Center is really very congruent with what our mission is here at Alluvium. We really believe in helping people, and it's very important to us that this space, this building, be used to channel a lot of philanthropic and altruistic things. To that extent, we're not taking any of the proceeds from this event. It's all going to Egan Warming Center, and we're really proud of that. I'd also be remiss if I didn't acknowledge some of you know my background. I'm a doctor at the Veterans Hospital and a professor at the University of Washington. But before I went through all that, I dropped out of high school, and I myself was houseless for four years and lived on the street. So if it weren't for the kindness of a lot of organizations, I probably would not be a doctor today, and I'm quite confident in that, in that conclusion. So I feel like what we do here is really very important and very life-changing, especially with as many young houseless people that are here in the area of Eugene. So um, I would like you to give a big round of applause to yourselves for being a part of a very philanthropic and altruistic cause. Um, and this is an original song. I play in a band called Tobias the Owl. So if you want to hear more of our music, you can look us up online, Tobias the Owl. We could go to California. Stretch our legs out in the ocean Lose our bodies in the currents That we ride 
I would take what's in my pockets I know you can use a change You might see a different side of me For a few days All I want is a love that rolls Like the waves that it calls me home But all I have is an empty throne I once had so many questions The answers still seem so lucid You spoke so softly and whispered When I asked You left your letters and I got it And you left shadows in the brush So that I would raise a forest From your top All I want is a love and roll Like the waves that call me home But all I have is an empty throne Is the flickering light of a candle blowing out? All I want is to feel the warmth of a love that's in my mind. In my mind, in your eyes, in my mind. Marilyn is a singer songwriter based out of Corvallis. And she writes songs about home, hiding out, and running like hell. She's releasing her new album any day now, but still not quite yet. And she is grateful to get to join this group of lovely musicians, that wouldn't include me, I would think, today as we work together to try to help.
So one singer to go. And before I introduce him, I want to thank everyone who has made this event happen, uh, particularly Steve Gibson, Julia O'Reilly, Carl Falsgraf, and Art Willie. We are inspired by the compassion and creativity of our fellow Caldera songwriters and Egan songwriters, some of whom joined us tonight, as well as the um, incredibly hardworking and dedicated Egan Warming Center staff and volunteers. And Eli Veridas is the, the pastor and facilitator of Alluvium Church. Red Wilson is our facilitator for the live stream. Red's back there, I think. Oh, she is. There she is. And um, Susan Smith is our door manager. <laughs> and she's in charge of checking the VAX cards and weeding out the riffraff. And I see she didn't succeed either. There's a, just filled with riffraff here. And uh, Art Willie is the stage manager and chief cat herder and our final performer. And Willie McEachern is the sound engineer and excellent singer-songwriter on his own right. And Sean Bossel is our video engineer. And Julia back there, Riley, O'Reilly, is the tireless, tech-savvy Caldera member and a banjo player. So I owe her our apologies. And she will edit the live stream of this performance into a production that will be made available for streaming at a later date. How long do you think? A couple weeks. Um, and as my friend Carl says, Julia is well. Julia is all those things that Julia does. So a round of applause for all these people. And now Art Willie. Art has been called a songwriter of the first order, to which he replies, you want fries with that? Pretty good. Although he has in fact seen the Loch Ness Monster without the benefit of psychedelics, and although he has actually sat on the Group W bench, his proudest achievements are his children, Kelly and Lucas. I heard the song he is about to close us with one memorable morning at the Caldera Song Camp up in the mountains near Sisters, and it's a song that I can assure you speaks to our conditions and to our times. Thank, thanks, thanks, Paul, and, and also uh, thanks to Kathy Burleson of the Never Ever Band for, for accompanying me here. So this is a, We Are Not Alone, Please Sing Along, um, and that goes for the folks at home. We can hear you, so do it. life, in this time, in this world, we are not alone. Sometimes sad and lonely, everything in blue,
this time we are not alone in this time we are not alone we walk part of the other and all one human family we are not alone we are not alone we this world we are not alone in this world we are not We are not alone in this life. We are not alone in this time. We are not alone in this world. We are not alone in this world. Thank you, everybody.